Welcome to this WiseAl tutorial on automating forms using Power Automate. Here's what you'll learn during the tutorial. So we'll begin by the example that we're going to create, which is a simple survey with three questions in about the Beatles. What we'll then do is show how you can create the form using forms, how you can distribute it so people can fill in their responses, and then how you can view the responses both within forms itself and through an Excel spreadsheet created for you automatically. What we'll then do is show how you can create a custom response sheet in Excel and get a flow to automatically take the responses from users and add them to the bottom of your custom responses sheet. And finally, we'll test this flow to check that when somebody gives their views on the Beatles, it automatically adds a row to the bottom of your Excel spreadsheet. But that's enough for me. I'm going to vanish now. And let's get started. So here's what we're going to do in this tutorial. We're going to create a form. Uh, it's going to be about a survey for the Beatles, uh, a little known Liverpudlian uh, four piece band in the 1960s, a fun quiz about the Fab Four. So it will ask three questions Who was your favourite Beatle? What's your favourite Beatles song? And what do you think of the lyrics to this song? What we'll then do is we'll collect the responses. I'm going through this very quickly because this is just a preview. So we'll send out a link, and when people fill in that link, uh, they'll be able to fill in their answers to the survey for themselves. So who was your favourite Beatle? Paul, undoubtedly, surely. What's your favourite Beatles song? Well, the shortest one I can think of off the top of my head is Help. I'll give that a four for the lyrics because I don't particularly like them, and I'll submit my responses. You'll then be able to look at the responses to this uh, survey, so you'll be able to go to any form, and you can see I've got five responses. So I can toggle between my responses by clicking on View Results, and I'm going to go to the final one I filled in just then, so you can see that I put Paul, Help and Four. Not only can you see the responses like that, but using forms you can see them in an Excel spreadsheet. So if I open this Excel spreadsheet, what you should be able to see is on the last line there, the responses I just filled in. But that doesn't look very easy to use and it's got a lot of extra columns. So what we're going to do in this example is create our own Excel spreadsheet looking like this to capture the results. It will only have three columns, the favourite Beatle, the favourite song and the lyrics rating. I may try capturing an email address just to show you some issues with that too. How will we do this? With a flow. So we'll create a flow called something like Track Responses to Beatles Survey and what it will do is respond to the trigger of when a new response is submitted in a Microsoft form. It will get the response details and add the rows into an Excel table. So compared with some of the other things we've done in recent tutorials, this is fairly straightforward and Microsoft Forms is a joy to use as you're about to discover. So let's get started. So the first thing we need to do is create a form. You can do that by going to the cloud-based forms application, click on the Wapple and choose forms. If you can't see that, you can always choose explore all of your apps. And in the search box, which appears at the top of the screen, you can just choose forms and go to it that way. You can see all the forms I've created. What we're going to do is create a new form together. So I can click on new form. There's two options here. There's new form or new quiz. A quiz is appropriate if you want to score the results to see how well somebody knows something. But we're just doing a survey, so we'll create a new form. I'll call my new form something like Beetle Survey for Tutorial. I won't bother with the description and we'll go straight into creating the questions. So the first question is a choice question. Who's your favourite Beetle? So the question is, who is your fave Beatle? And there's four possible answers. The first answer is John. The second answer is Paul. And then I'm going to add two more options. The third one is George. And the fourth one, of course, is Ringo. So those are my four options. At the bottom of questions, you can often see additional options down here that you can choose. In this case, I don't want to choose multiple answers because you can only have one favourite Beatle, I think you'll agree. But I do want to make this a required question, so I have to fill it in. If you click on the three dots, you can sometimes see additional useful uh, information you can specify, but I don't really want it to be a drop down. And I certainly don't want to add branching so that it goes to different bits of my quiz or survey rather, depending on the answer I give. So I'll just leave that as it is. So that's my first question. My second question is a text question. So I can type in, which is your favourite song? 
And I don't really want a long answer. I just want a simple answer, but I do want to make it required. There's no additional options I want to specify there, so that will do for my second question. What I want to do now is to create a new section. So I want the first question to go in one section and the other two questions to go in another. So I could do that by clicking on the drop arrow to the right of the list of possible questions I could ask and choosing to add a new section. So once I do that, it gives me a chance to set my section titles. So this second section will be about the songs. And if I go up to the top, my first section will be about the band. So those are my two sections. But my questions are in the wrong section. At least my second one is, which is your favorite song? So I can't click and drag, but what I can do is click on that and click on this drop arrow to move the question down. And that will move it into the section. So I've now got one other question I want to ask, which is what do you think of the lyrics of the song? Now, the obvious thing to do would be to choose rating. Um, and that gives me a choice of different symbols I can specify, I can have a number of different levels, but I'm going to choose an even fancier thing than that. So I'll just delete that, delete my question. And instead of doing that, I can click on this drop arrow and choose from a number of additional question types. I'm going to choose a net promoter score, which for some reason has a registered trademark symbol next to it. So I can say, uh, what do you think of the lyrics for this song? And I'll have my range going from naught, which means I hate them, to 10, which means I love them. And that's the advantage of a net promoter score. You can label the start and the end of your scale. And that's going to be a required question. And I think that pretty much completes my survey. I love the extra questions being asked at the bottom here. They seem to bear no relation to what I could conceivably be interested in. It's often worth looking at them just for fun. So what I can now do is preview my survey. So I can click on this preview button at the top right. And here's what it's going to look like. So the first section is about the band. I can choose an answer. And then to click on next, to go on to the second question, which is about the songs. So I can type something here. I can choose a number and then I can submit the results. So that's what it will look like. I can then click on this back button and it's often quite hard to see that. It's just up there to go back to editing my form. So now that I've created the form, what I can do is distribute it. So what we're going to do now is to distribute your survey. But just before you do that, it's a good idea to click on these small three dots at the top right of the screen to set some settings. So who can respond? I'm going to say that only people within the Wisal company can respond. And one of the important considerations behind this is that if I do that, I can choose to capture people's name and possibly their email address as well. If you choose anyone can respond, there's no way of capturing any information about them. And that's to do with privacy issues on the internet. You wouldn't really thank people if whenever you filled in a server on the internet, they automatically got hold of all your personal details. So that's an internet setting, not a forms one. That's in, it's important to realize that there's absolutely no way of capturing someone's email address when they fill in a form, unless you specifically ask for it. So I'm gonna make it internal. I'm gonna capture people's name and I'm going to let people reply more than once so that Dave can vote for Ringo again and again and again. I'm not gonna set any start or end date or any time durations for this. Uh, nor am I going to shuffle the questions, which is just silly, but I will show a progress bar, allowing me to move between different sections easily or see where I am up, up to. I'm also going to create a custom thank you message. So I've ticked this box before, and my thank you message will say thank you for your Beatle opinions. I'll also let people save their responses, why not? And also let them edit them before they submit it, just to make sure that people submit the best response they possibly can. So having set reasonable settings for my form, what I can now do is start to collect the responses. And you can do that by clicking on the rather strangely named Collect Responses button. What it should really say, I think, is begin my survey. So I, I get asked the question again of who can respond. I've already replied to that, so I'll leave these options as they were. And then it's important to realize that there are four separate icons here with lots of interesting bits of questions behind them. So the first one is the one selected by default, it gives me a chance to copy a link. So I'll click on that and what it will do is create a link which I can go to at any time or send out to anyone I want to fill in my survey. 
The second icon, if I click on that, allows me to send a request. So I'm going to send an email to myself, Delegate51, uh, with an email address, and I'm going to send it by Outlook rather than by Teams. So if I click on the Send button, I'll then be able to start uh, the survey by responding to the button in the email, and we'll have a look at that in a second. We'll also get notification messages when I filled in the form. The third icon allows me to send out a QR code for people to scan, and the fourth one allows me to paste, or sorry, embed a link on a web page. So Microsoft really has thought about everything here. So let's look at the email address which just sent out. I'm going to close that down. So I could, if I wanted to, just paste in here in the URL the link I want to go to. But instead of doing that, I'm going to go to Outlook. And what I'm going to do is go to the email address I email I received, click on that, and then click on the Start Now button to begin my survey. And what that will do is bring up the survey ready for me to fill in the responses. And in the next part of this tutorial, I'll show you how to fill it in and how to capture and show those responses. OK, so let's fill in a response. Who's my favourite beetle? Paul, always. Easy question. You can see there, there's my progress bar. Just highlight that, showing I'm on page one of two, section one of two. Go on to the next question. Uh, this is section two, which is about the songs. So I can say, what's my favourite song? What is my favourite Beatles song? So difficult. I'll choose Girl because it's nice and short. What do I think of the lyrics? They're so so. I'll give them a six. And that's it. I finished. So I can submit that. I could, if I like, save my response to edit it in the future, but I'm not interested in that. So what I'll do now is go back to my form and have a look at the responses to it. So there's my form. And if I go to it, you can see at the top left, it shows the responses. I've received one response. I'll click on that. So you can see there's a view results button here. I can click on that to view my responses and I can use these arrows to go between them. But in fact, there's only one response to look at. So the first one says, who's your favorite Beatle? I said, Paul, what's your favorite song, Girl? And they gave it a lyrics, a rating of six. What you can also do with the results is see them automatically in an Excel spreadsheet. So if I click on open in Excel, you can see it will create a spreadsheet which has been filled in for me automatically by forms, nothing to do with Power Automate yet. And you can see the responses I gave there. So that's how you can look at and uh, collate the responses you receive. What we're now going to do is customize them by writing a Power Automate flow, which takes as its trigger someone filling in a response to your survey. So the first thing I'm going to do is create an Excel spreadsheet to hold my results, my custom results, not those ones created for me automatically by forms. So I'll create a spreadsheet. Let's call it um, Beatly. Not sure how you spell Beatly. Beatly results. And we'll fill in the column headers. So we'll start by getting the uh, fave Beatle. And then we'll get the fave song. And then we'll get the lyric rating. And finally, I'm going to capture the person who submitted this, which I'll call person. So those are going to be my four columns. Uh, now, what I need to do is make this into a table so that I can add a row into it. So I can do that by clicking on one of the cells in it, choosing to insert a table. And my table does have headers. So it's a very small table. And then I can go to table design and give it a better name than table one. So I'll call it songs. So having got my Excel spreadsheet, I can now start creating my flow. So what we're now going to do is to create a new flow, which will pick up on when someone fills in our form and capture the results in our custom Excel spreadsheet. We've managed to get all the way through the tutorial without mentioning Power Automate. It's definitely time to remedy that. So I'm going to create an automated cloud flow, and it's going to be based on a trigger from forms, but I'm actually going to skip this stage and do this in the next screen. So I'll call my form uh, Track Responses to Beatles Survey. And for triggers, I'll see what forms has to offer me. Some uh, applications are quite rich with triggers. Forms isn't. There's only one. When a new response is submitted, so I'll choose that. I need to say which form I'm basing this on. And this is where Microsoft have got confused. I created different versions of these. And I know from bitter experience, having just tried this, I need to choose the second one in the list. Hopefully, you won't have this problem. 
If you always give your forms different names when you create them, you'll never see this problem. But I thought I'd leave it in because it's just cost me a lot of annoyance. So you can share my pain. So I'll choose the second one. Because as I say, I know from experience that's the one I need. And then I can choose to create a new step. And what this new step will do is to get information about the response. How do I do that? Well, the easiest way is to look at all the actions thrown up by Microsoft Forms. And there's only one to get the response details. So that's what I'm going to choose. It then asks me for the form again. I think this is an unnecessary question. I've already answered it. It should be able to pick that up automatically. But I'll choose my same form again. And now I can choose the response ID, the unique idea of which response was filled in. And that will let me get at, in the next step, uh, the information the user typed in. And I'm going to put this into an Excel spreadsheet. So I'll choose Excel Online Actions. And I'll choose to add a row into a table in Excel. I then need to go through the standard uh, options of choosing where my Excel file is stored. Mine is in OneDrive. It's in the OneDrive folder, or OneDrive document library, rather. The file is called Beatly Results, if you remember. And the table what I called Songs. And the moment I choose the table, it will expand it to show some additional fields. So I can now say what the person chose to be their favorite beetle. And you can see here, having got the response ID, it lists out all the questions which were asked. So I can say that was a response to the question, who's your favorite beetle? The favorite song was the response to which is your favorite song? And the lyric rating was a response to the question, what do you think of the lyrics for this song? You can see it's also showing me the sections, which as far as I can tell is completely irrelevant. You can't answer a section. So then I can choose finally who filled this in. And for the person, I've got access to the responder's email, something I wouldn't do if I'd submit it, if I'd distributed this to the world rather than just within Wise Owl. And that completes my flow. So I can now save that and I can try running it. And the way I'll do that is by filling a survey. And with a bit of luck, this flow will run, it will be triggered, and I'll be able to look at the Excel spreadsheet to see the results. So what I'll now do is go back to my forms. Sometimes when you do this, it seems to ask you to log in again, but mine hasn't on this occasion. I'll go to my Beetle survey for tutorial, and I will just recreate the link, because I haven't got it anymore, so I'll copy my link, and I'll paste that into the URL and go to it. And it comes up with the survey. So I'm now going to say my favorite Beetle was George. It wasn't, it was Paul, but never mind. Go to the next stage. My favorite song this time is going to be, let's go for Yesterday, that old perennial, the most recorded song in history, apparently. And the lyrics to that are very good. So I'll give that a nine and I'll submit this. Now, what should be happening in the background is that should have triggered the action to run my flow and it should have populated my Excel spreadsheet. So what I can now do is go back to my flows. And if I go to my flow, you can see the run history down there. It did run 12 seconds ago. That's a very good sign. And what that should mean is if I now go to my Excel spreadsheets, and if I retrieve the file I created called Beatly Results, which is this one, then you should see that it contains the results I filled in. In fact, I got an error message there after about a minute, and then it appeared, but I spared you that. So if that appears on your machine, don't be worried. It will appear eventually. So you can see there my results. I was Delegate 51, that's who filled it in. And you can see the information I typed in. So it all works perfectly. I suppose the only other comment to make about this is, was it worth it? Don't forget that when you create a form like this, you can automatically see the responses and automatically see an Excel spreadsheet containing them. So the only thing I've really gained is I'm capturing more precise information about it. And I've got a bit more control over the formatting. But of course, there's nothing to stop me in my flow, which I just created. Um, which is over here. There's nothing to stop me doing something else. So at the moment, I'm just adding a row into an Excel spreadsheet, but I could send me myself an email. I could post it on Teams. The world is my oyster.